The economy is doing better. Is this for real? Can it last? Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The American economy grew nicely in the third and fourth quarters last year. Unemployment remains low. Inflation is down. Consumer spending is strong. Interest rates have been easing. Stocks have been surging. Consumer sentiment is improving. Are happy days here again? Not really. Here's why. The economy has been fueled by unprecedented peacetime government spending. The federal budget today is over $6 trillion, up from pre-COVID outlays in 2019 of $4.4 trillion. That's about a 40% increase for no good reason. We're not in a world war, at least not yet. The COVID crisis is over. Emergency appropriations bills are over. Yet government spending as a proportion of the economy is at record levels of almost 30%. Short term, this liquidity has boosted sales, and considerable cash does remain. Money market funds for both individuals and businesses have assets of over $6 trillion. But such binge spending by Uncle Sam is equivalent to a sugar high. The government can't create resources. It gets them from us through taxation, borrowing, and inflation, which is a form of taxation. If spending was the key to economic growth, the Soviet Union would have won the Cold War. Washington is on the road to financial perdition if it doesn't adopt sound pro-growth policies like those of Ronald Reagan, cutting tax rates, getting a grip on spending, and pursuing deregulation. The jobs numbers reveal how flimsy this expansion is. Noted economist Brian Westbury points out, quote, if we exclude job gains in government, Health care and education, which are largely funded by government, and leisure and hospitality still recovering from lockdowns, job creation growth looks exceptionally weak. In the last seven months of 2023, payrolls, excluding those categories, rose only 3,000 per month. End quote. That is a signal of a coming economic slowdown, not a boom. Here's another concern. We have right now a tale of two economies. Many people are indeed finally moving ahead, but millions are falling behind or struggling to stay even, which is why credit card debt is high and made worse by sky-high interest rates that have not yet been cut. Personal and business bankruptcies are growing. Another cloud is the tsunami of President Biden's regulations, which are imposing immense costs on the economy. Estimates range as high as $3 trillion. These burdens will severely slow future growth. They have to be reversed. For example, the auto industry, except for Tesla, is headed for insolvency unless the Biden mandates for electric vehicles, EVs, are rescinded. Economic models didn't predict what the economy is doing now because they didn't factor in the huge disruptions and costly dislocations of the COVID lockdowns, a devastating and hopefully one-time event. Two more concerns. One is that the Federal Reserve doesn't yet understand the true nature of inflation, which comes when you reduce the value of the dollar. Prosperity doesn't cause inflation. The other is that Biden's foolish foreign policy of appeasement is setting the stage for a highly dangerous military crisis. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. (music) 